what is going on youtube bcd back with another quick video and today i wanted to talk about all the tips and tricks that i have picked up over the last few days um some things you may already know some things you may not but basically i wanted to provide a easy video to reference if you are looking for just some tips and things to kind of get yourself started um, as you go on your journey of owning a steam deck so if you're interested in that and you're interested in more Steam Deck content, don't forget to check out the channel, like and subscribe and stay tuned because we're going to jump right into it after this. All right, so when you first fire up your Steam Deck, I'm talking as soon as you boot it up, get everything, sign in, get to looking at your games and and what you're going to install on it. First thing I would want you to do is actually go ahead and create a recovery drive. Um, all these are going to be linked, especially the, the thumb drive, the everything that I kind of use um, is going to be linked in the description below. But this here is um, Steam's official report for the recovery instructions on how to create one. Very simple, easy to read, easy, easy to go through. Um, you're not going to have any issues with creating one. Um, and they probably provide both uh, Windows and Linux um, options for you to kind of create one. So this is a way for you to use and recover your device, whether you need to wipe it clean um, or reinstall a extra actual Steam OS if in case something happens there, if you, you're, you're doing Windows or whatever on it, just create one, have one on hand. That'll be the first thing i would do i've already used mine and i only had it for about you know a week and a half now so maybe something you want to do this suggestion is purely convenience um having a usb-c hub to be and having it pass through a battery while you're able to kind of uh, plug in your keyboard mouse um the usb stick that i just was talking about to kind of recover everything that's going to come in handy. You, you're going to want to have that. So um, this is the one of the cheaper ones I was able to find, and it has a good of good amount of options, USB-C uh, 3.0, USB-C options. So this is the one that I would recommend if I was to look for one. It does support Linux, um, and I, I don't see it having any issues. Read the comments. Um, looks to be a good one. So. This is one I'll use. It's just as a suggestion. You don't have to go with it. I'm just telling you that you're for convenience. I would recommend getting one. The next thing uh, for your device would be to kind of add more storage. This here is probably the most bang for your buck one I found performance wise on top of just the, you know, the amount of storage you're going to get. Um, they don't have a, t a terabyte option for this. I'm waiting for that um, for this type of version. Um, but as of now, this is the one I'm currently using. Uh, if you wanted to expand your storage, um, it is on sale. So a lot of this stuff I was trying to find good prices. Pick and choose what you want. I went with the 512 for now. I'm probably going to expand that when I can when I find like a two terabyte or something like that. I don't think the, ter the terabytes right now are worth it, but um, yeah, that is what I'm planning on doing in the future. But right now, this is something that I was able to use to kind of get a pretty decent amount of games on here and um, a lot of emulation as well. So this is something that I enjoyed and this is why I'm presenting it to you. So another one of those things where it's not necessary, especially if you have a larger capacity of hard drive already um, in the Steam Deck, but it is kind of because that's just too small. 512 is still too small for me, but it's what it's doable. So that's why I'm saying that. Next, we have a, just a standard two terabyte external hard drive. This is what I use to move files from my Windows to Linux device. I format it in, into NTFS. I haven't had any issues moving files. Um, so this is what I've been using. It's an older version for me, but um, overall, it works fine. Um, there is options for you to transfer files via, a, you know, a terminal link or a server link. 
but I don't find it necessary, especially when you can just move files over from your Windows PC to your Linux PC or to your Steam Deck with simply plugging in a hard drive. Uh, formatting in an NTFS isn't hard either. So for some reason, when I first looked up how to move and transfer files, nobody just said you can use a hard drive and plug it in. It was more of people saying you got to use this sync thing or something of that nature or, or, or whatever. When simply, I was like, let me just try to format it into a, you know, a hard drive into something that can read on both Linux and Windows, and it hasn't caused any issues. So, um, yeah, that was my, that's my recommendation if you were just trying to move stuff over. I don't even think you need to have a two terabyte, but this is what I'm using to back up my um, actual SD card. Because, again, that won't it won't necessarily break your SD card, but in case something happened, you just have all that stuff already backed up. I would never probably go over two terabytes, so that's why I went with the two terabyte version. Because simply enough, I, I don't think that it's necessary to have that much stuff on a on a portable device. You're not going to play all of it, so <laughs> at that point, you're just wasting time. So two terabyte is a sweet spot for me, and that's what I'm going to be doing when it comes to my Steam Deck. So moving back to the Steam Deck in itself, uh, there is some software that I really enjoy and really like how they kind of put it all together. So there is this thing called the MU Deck, um, and this is what you're kind of seeing here. Um, there's a ton of people that have done great, great tutorials on this. So I'm going to just link them. Um, but basically what it does is it allows you to kind of have a very clean look for your emulated games and things like that on your on your uh, Steam Deck. So it kind of gives you this and it kind of gives you this layout that makes it look real clean, real easy and really cool. So uh, that is something that you can do uh, and it's very simple. Um, here is the website for you real fast and it's just basically called MU Deck. You can play your retro games and it kind of provides you a real a buttoned up version of each emulator. So it kind of automatically um, changes the controls to fit the Steam Deck. It automatically brings in any of the artwork and things like that to make it look good in your Steam OS. Um, and it just basically simplifies it for you. Like I said, it's a very small, easy thing to do. Five step guide, <laughs> you download now, you're good to go. So this is something that, um, like again, I'm gonna link people that actually know what they're doing, talking about, and can really walk you through it. Very simple um, to kind of get yourself up and running on emulation on the Steam Deck. This here is the GitHub, and it kind of answers even answers questions and things like that. So if you're having a problem, you can always check out this site and kind of see what's currently happening, uh, what kind of issues are going on. So clicking on the issues kind of brings up that stuff too. So another, like I said, community-based people enjoy to help. So the next thing I wanted to show you guys, um, and I'm gonna switch back to the deck for a sec. Another cool thing is the Heroics Games Manager um, or Launcher. It basically is for Epic and GOG games. Um, so you log into those on this game launcher and it essentially pulls it in for you to be able to play those games on your Steam Deck. Um, so this here is the basic level. Basically, you just pull it, you pull it in and you you now have your the game launcher and you can pull that up and you can go inside and once you once it actually starts to run you're going to be able to see what games you have on both on your epic game store as well as on your gog store um this is i don't like kind of going into the this gui here so what you can do as well uh, once you get the heroic game launcher up and running is that you can literally um, pull the games in to just be sitting on your Steam o, uh, Steam Deck as a as its own game, so you don't necessarily have to go into that GUI. And it is The Witcher Three. This is a GOG game. Um, you could probably tell if I went to the settings and kind of went to properties. 
what's it launching so it's launching that heroic bash launcher and this is another form of the heroic launcher it's just another like small thing to install in order for it to get this way um, obviously there's it's not the best when it comes to pulling in the graphics but it'll do you know it is, you know what you know what you're trying to get at here so if you click on that game launcher you know once you're three you hit play it's now booting into that heroic game launcher and then it's going to pop up said game And the cool thing about it is you also still have the ability to change settings within this game in this game alone and change it if it want to set it up to run in a different type of permission of Proton or um, compatibility for Proton. You can do that as well. So you don't have to necessarily do it for the full on hero game, heroic game launcher. So that's just another way again of kind of creating a you a, a individualized you know experience for each game that's coming through your gog or your epics game store um so yeah so just to recap what my recommendations are is for you to get you a USB C hub for your steam deck in order to plug in your peripherals like a keyboard mouse hard drives you know thumbsticks whatever the case may be um getting you a thumbstick um and actually creating a recovery drive is probably number uno when it comes to figuring out everything just making sure you have one of those around in case something happens you can recover your steam os um, and then going into additional storage 512 gigs is a pretty good sweet spot right now and some of the one terabyte ones are okay but I feel like you get more bang for your buck by going with the 512 Samsung Evo Select for now. Um, getting yourself a hard drive to kind of back up your um, SD card in case of any issues or anything like that. It's just good measurements to kind of take to make sure you're covered in case of anything happening. Whether you have to, um, your Steam, your, your SD card melts or start gets corrupted or whatever the case may be. Normally, you don't need to do that because your SD card can get popped back out. But say, for instance, you want to back up your Steam OS and your games that you downloaded, whatever the case may be, you can do that with your hard drive. Um, and then going into some of the software things and, you know, MU deck, having the ability to emulate all your games and um, have it in a very cool and aesthetically appeasing format where you kind of have these collections and this ability to kind of see everything you're playing and um, create the artwork and, and put that into the steam os itself is really really cool heroic game launcher again that's something that's going to allow you to get in uh, to those epic you know exclusive games and gog as well those games that you you know made collections on in the past you don't have to just say oh i'm getting rid of them or i'm done with them you can actually pull those into the steam os in a very cool way so it feels as if they're running through that steam as well um but yeah those are the things that i kind of as i've been using it and tinkering with it and getting um better understanding of the device those things have come in handy helpful and useful in a lot of different ways so that's why i wanted to kind of share that with you guys but if you did enjoy this content please don't forget to like subscribe uh, share the video if you like as well as um, comment down below anything that i may have missed any tips that you may have for the community to kind of um, jump on as well anything that products wise that you feel like are better all that stuff leave it in the comments below um, but I always want to thank you again for watching and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.